Let's begin by asking ChatGPT to convert from Cisco IOS XE to Juniper Junos. We'll provide some basic instructions, but no actual examples. Back at the dev box, I've listed the files in the GAI directory. This time, we'll examine the zeroshotconvert.py script, which is our first attempt at converting configurations. In addition to importing the OpenAI constructor, I import OS so that we can read files from disk. It's always good to decouple configuration data and input text from your source code. I'm also importing argument parser so that we can easily specify inputs to our script. Jumping down to the program's entry point, I first define a list of supported platforms and models. Enumerating choices helps to document the available options from the command line. These arguments include the source and destination OSs, the source configuration to convert, and the model to use. Note that specifying a model is not required. That's because I've implemented some logic to select a default model. If the user has not specified a model, we'll assign it to the first model in the list of choices. This is GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is the least expensive and is good for development testing. I've also specified a num choices option, allowing AI to give us multiple answers to a single question. We then call the main function and pass in those arguments. Entering the main function, I first define the GAI input file directory. We then load the prompt itself, which we'll review shortly. Last, we load the user-specified configuration file to convert. I also define an output directory called choices. Within the choices directory, there will be different subdirectories for each method we attempt, such as zero shot, few shot, and more. We'll create those directories if they don't already exist. Just like last time, We'll ask AI to adopt the persona of a relevant domain expert. To generate our question, we need to render our prompt template. Those of you familiar with network automation have likely encountered Jinja2 for text templating. I find that using Python's string.format method is easier for prompt engineering. Let's examine the prompt, keeping in mind that these three parameters are passed in for variable substitution. The prompt begins with clear instructions to convert from the source type to the destination type. Notice the curly brace syntax, which is a common Python technique. Using triple backticks, we separate our plain English request from the device configuration we want to convert. I then provide additional details about how the response should be structured. I don't want any commentary, just the output configuration for the desired OS. Prompt engineering is a fine balance between being specific without overly constraining the model. To that end, I've enumerated some requirements. We must ensure that AI does not duplicate commands. This wastes money by consuming tokens unnecessarily. I also ask the model to preserve element names, such as names of access lists, route maps, and interface IDs. Many platforms use leading whitespace to indicate scope, much like Python. We should retain leading whitespace for readability, but strip trailing whitespace. I also forbid the abbreviation of commands, as this will not only break item potency, but makes the configuration harder to read. Last, I tell AI to ignore any encrypted values. We can't expect AI to understand those values, much less convert them between platforms. As a cost-saving measure, I like to print out my prompt after rendering it and immediately quit the program to verify its correctness. As with everything in computer science, garbage in, garbage out. Let's get our prompt right before we start spending money. I'll quickly run the script with some sample arguments supplied. We'll talk more about Batfish later in the course, but for now, just understand that I have a pre-conversion snapshot containing all six router configurations. I'm selecting r1.txt from within that snapshot as our input. Scrolling up, we see our prompt displayed to the console. The variable substitution appears to be working correctly. We also see our device configuration enclosed in triple backticks. Towards the bottom, we see our requirements again with functional variable substitution. In real life, I suggest spending a few minutes to carefully read the prompt and make sure it suits your needs before making API calls. Let's resume our code review. I've commented out this debugging line so that our script can continue, but it's good to keep it in your source code for quick troubleshooting. 
This code is nearly identical to what we saw in the previous clip. We create an OpenAI client, then create a chat completion, passing in the user-specified model and the number of choices. As n increases, so does the processing time and the cost. We pass in our context and also our question, which is the prompt we just reviewed. Because we may receive multiple responses, we shouldn't statically index the first choice. Using a for loop, let's enumerate the choices using i as a unique identifier for the output names. This way, we can store the AI responses on disk for analysis later. Because our input was enclosed in triple backticks, so too will the output. I'd like to strip off excess white spaces and backticks so that the text file actually looks like a networking config. Again, this is just basic Python syntax and isn't specific to AI. Let's run the script again using the same command as before, except I'll specify that I want to use GPT-4 and that I want two choices to be generated. After about 10 seconds, the script finishes. Let's check our output directory and see what happened. As expected, we have two choices here, each one representing a different configuration file. You can see that the lengths are different, which will always be the case with generative AI. Let's briefly review the results. In the first example, we can see the hierarchical Junos configuration style. GPT-4 assumes that our platform supports gigabit ethernet, although our input file didn't mention that. Scrolling down, it incorrectly suggests MD5 authentication, when in reality we were using simple text authentication. This config isn't even in the right place either. Under OSPF, the configuration looks plausible at a glance, but interface type broadcast isn't a real Junos command. If you want an OSPF broadcast interface, just omit the interface type option as broadcast is the default. Considering we didn't give GPT-4 any examples of what we wanted, this is pretty impressive. Let's check the second file. This time, AI gave us the Junos set syntax rather than the hierarchical one. After all, we didn't explicitly specify which one we wanted, nor did we provide any examples, so we shouldn't be surprised to see inconsistent results. GPT-4 continues to assume that we are using gigabit interfaces and incorrectly uses MD5 authentication. It also gets this area assignment completely wrong in a few different places. Don't despair because we are going to try four alternative methods to improve this result.